Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm Samantha Loring. Now this week we're exploring Rwanda's financial sector. Despite the country being considered one of the least developed on the continent, it's also one of the fastest growing, boasting average annual economic growth of 7%. Now this has allowed the financial sector to thrive amid improved fiscal policies and more stringent regulation. CNBC Africa's Irene Burungi Magisha takes a closer look at the current state of the sector and efforts made by government to achieve a stable and sustainable economy. High inflation has continued to plague the East African community, with countries like Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda and Burundi all recording double-digit growth between December 2010 and December 2012 on the back of the high oil and food prices. But Rwanda seems to be bucking the trend. Over the past three years, the country has maintained its inflation rate at moderate levels, below 6.5%, mainly due to good harvests a relatively stable currency and coordinated government policies to mitigate inflationary pressures. Really what has contributed the greatest uh, is macroeconomic stability and the conducive business environment. The conducive business environment really allows people to come and invest in an environment that uh, is, is more attractive. But the macroeconomic stability is a prerequisite for any investment that comes to this country. And that's why the economy has been growing really, uh, if you look at the, the last five years, on average by 8.2%. Even including last year. Last year, even despite the problems that we've had, especially with the donor disbursement being delayed, uh, it showed that Rwanda was really resilient. I mean, it's a new sector, it's young, and it's, so we've been having new players coming in. And as they come in, they come in with new products. Uh, and this helps to to increase uh, competitiveness within the sector, but also innovation. Uh, but also we, we put in place proper legal and regulatory framework that facilitates this growth. The financial sector has played a key role in rebuilding the economy since the end of the civil war. Sound macroeconomic and structural policies like the Financial Sector Development Program and the Economic Development and Poverty Reduction Plan have established a comprehensive policy framework and a detailed action plan for developing the sector backed by the substantial donor assistance. Increasing access to financial services has been one of the, the biggest and we've seen investments in new banks and here I, I really must say that one of the areas we've seen intra-African investments has been the financial sector where over the last maybe I would say six years we've had Ecobank come um, into Rwanda, we have KCB, we have Equity Bank, uh, now we have INM from Kenya, all regional African banks and I think the financial sector probably tells best the story of how African firms are investing within Africa, which, which is a very good and welcome phenomenon. We also saw the um, private sector, foreign direct investments also uh, are coming in uh, strongly. It has been growing, but last year it increased by, by 50%. We saw the diaspora uh, resources coming in strongly, this time incre increasing to 175 uh, uh, million US dollars. We saw the tourism increasing by 12% to 282 million US dollars. So all these are responding to the conducive environment that we see. And we saw our banking sector increasing significantly uh, to that. The credit private sector increased by 34.9%, uh, almost 34%. So this was by 33.9%, uh, sorry, uh, close to 34%. This is quite significant by any standards. Uh, we look at the profitability of the different institutions and we also look at how your portfolio is performing within the, the, the portfolio I mean the loan book you have as a bank. Uh, so how are they performing in terms of the health of the portfolio, non-performing loans, but also in terms of how your portfolio is diversified uh, to different sectors and how these sectors uh, are working so we avoid uh, an institution to overlay on one sector that could crash and crash with the with the institution. So we, we have these different uh, measures, and with this we have a clear regulatory framework in place that we put minimum requirements for for each uh, financial institution that you need to meet to ensure your the health of the of the institution. We also for up issues of governance, uh, and we, we have to make sure that. These are governed as, uh, as corporates, not as private business. 
Yeah, so that helps to ensure stability and growth of this uh, financial sector. Randers Frank is market driven and the central bank only intervenes on the domestic foreign exchange market by selling foreign exchange to banks in order to stabilize the local currency. If you look historically for the you know, last uh, almost uh, um, 10 years, our currency has been quite stable. It's market driven, mm -hmm. but it has been stable all the way through. And that has, been, uh, that has helped because once it's stable, then it allows even investors to make long-term decisions because this time they know that the currency is well maintained. And up to now, there is a very significant cushion of our reserves to make sure it can keep it more stable for quite some time. The country's Vision 2020 plans to build a middle-income status country by promoting investor confidence and ensuring that all factors remain constant. Driven by this vision, government is regulating market cash flows by keeping inflation levels stable. The 8% average growth that Rwanda has experienced actually has been one of the highest in the world. And, and in fact, the IMF um, projects that Rwanda will grow ninth fastest this year in the world. But for that to, achieve, uh, to happen and for us to achieve that, the financial sector has had a very big role in financing development. Even for the private sector, a robust financial sector that has available uh, resources and funds that the private sector needs is very critical. And so the development we've seen and the growth we've seen and the one that we want to see going forward is going to very much go along with how quickly and how faster the, pr the financial sector can grow because the financial sector will be able to raise financing that is required for, for this without an equivalent growth or even more growth in the financial sector you can't expect this, you know, the, the growth of other sectors to happen. The GDP of Rwanda has been doing well, I would say, over the, the past 10 years. Uh, to 2012, had an average growth of GDP in general of about 8.2%. Uh, and that translates into GDP per capita growth of around 5. Uh, almost 5.8% growth. And this has seen GDP per capita increasing from about 204 in 2002 to 644 US dollars in 2012. And of course, as you know, our target for 2020 is 1,240. And we have confidence based on what we see in the medium term uh, plans of our EDPRS that we will be able to achieve that uh, uh, GDP per capita. The support the government has offered in terms of uh, policy changes, uh, reforms that need to be, uh, to be implemented, whether policy or law or even practices in some cases, to ensure that that thinking is supported. Uh, I know in some cases government has also gone um, ahead to provide what I call hand-holding services. You know, you're not able to move from one point, what do you need? Is it a business plan that we can put together, that can help you put together? Is it a consultant? Is it access to a certain technology uh, that, that, that you're lacking that we can you know, help you show where you can get it. Government is also promoting domestic savings as a prerequisite to provide long-term savings to the banks who in turn lend to long-term investors. This means the availability of resources and cost of those resources affects the lending rate set by the banks. Rather than just programs, we included skills development for productivity whether it is agriculture productivity, whether it's non-agriculture uh, or off-farm jobs to be created, especially with a focus uh, on uh, youth employment. That way, if we develop the skills across the board in all the sectors, it's going to have a significant contribution in the implementation of the programs within the uh, rural development and also for economic transformation. The more Rwandans we bring in the circuit, in the financial sector, the more the, the financial sector is able to mobilize uh, savings, to mobilize depots, and to do business anyway, because they have many people coming to, to the financial sector. But also has another advantage that the more Rwandans we have in the net, in the financial sector, the more advantages they have to use these financial services to improve their livelihoods. The financial sector has gone a long way in, 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 in transforming itself in terms of diversifying their risk. If you look at the majority of the bank's uh, books, uh, their balance sheets have you know, um, 
good chunk of it in investment portfolio in the long term uh, uh, financing mechanisms arrangements which speaks to the fact that there is a bit of uh, development outside in the market that you see that is supported by the uh, extension of the credit uh, to the long term projects um, that's on the business side. On the individual side, you'd see on the retail market, you'd see that most majority of the banks now do mortgages, um, which, again, on the business side, uh, supports the real estate development uh, uh, businesses. Despite the impact of the global financial crisis, Rwanda is on a strong growth path that has primarily been driven by good harvests and increase in exports, largely due to rising commodity prices and high domestic demand, supported by expanding credit to the private sector. Now, a lot of these people are, uh, are people trading. Uh, we also do have people who are in, uh, in farming. Uh, which again are sectors that uh, the typical banking products under corporate and retail would not be able to fully address the needs of those clients in those sectors. So definitely uh, there is a clear indication that uh, more people are being able to access financial services due to the fact that uh, micro lending now is, is, is something that is being seen as, as, as a means to being able to empower these people. The quality of the loan portfolio, what we do, for example, we work with a, a scorecard system. That's a system that based on, on uh, let's say, historical data, we are able to, uh, to, f to analyze uh, credit applications very fast and very accurate. Uh, and of course, we monitor the portfolio very well. So to ensure that we have a good loan book and that will help um, let's say future growth of our uh, providing financial services to uh, to the to the people in in rural areas, SMEs and others. If, for example, here of low savings capacity, you hear of, of banks not being able to extend long-term credit, you know, in excess in excess of 15 years. You hear um, also them not even having the capacity to undertake on big projects, for example those that require uh, huge amounts of money. All that stems from the structure of the economy. Uh, and that, I wouldn't say there's anybody to blame it on, because that's, we are a young economy, we're growing. The banking sector has made significant progress in expanding its services to a large portion of the population that was previously unbanked. This has helped broaden lending in borrowing levels, encouraging an entrepreneurship-driven economy. The number of people now accessing uh, formal financial services had increased. Uh, and that's obviously because of some of the initiatives like what Bank of Kidali is doing in terms of uh, micro-lending. So definitely that has, uh, those initiatives have helped to bring in a lot of more people uh, into the banking space uh, or access to financial services. Uh, the non-performing loans were, uh, have reduced uh, from 8.5% uh, to 6.1%, to uh, which is a good, uh, which is a good, uh, uh, I mean, progress. Yeah, that's one of the... That's one of the, the, the impact of the Credit Reference Bureau. Uh, and uh, many people are accessing credit because of, uh, uh, because of the, the, the availability of the credit information and the credit, sharing, credit information sharing. In terms of the growth, what you see is that the, the, the country is undergoing a, a strong gro economic growth. And if you see the growth uh, percentage in Rwanda, and if you compare that to average global average, you see that Rwanda is doing remarkably well. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we're taking a look at interbanking transactions and how Rwanda can leverage on regional integration.